All right, so what else can we do with this? Well, we can also find something called the interquartile range. Um, interquartile is technically one word, and then range would be a separate word. The IQR. IQR is going to be um, basically your range from quartile 3 to quartile 1. Okay, so you just subtract those two numbers, and that will give you your IQR, your range. Um, we didn't discuss range earlier, but I had a different video on um, that I posted that talked about range. The range in this data set is uh, 15 to 34, so that's a total range of 19. Okay, that would be the range for this data, the whole data set. The interquartile range would be just the, the range between quartile 3 and quartile 1. Well, quartile 3 was 32, quartile 1 was 19, so that is a 13 number uh, range. So the IQR is 13. Okay, what does all this tell you? Well, this just kind of tells you how the data is spread out. It's just a way of kind of, um, you know, getting our our feelers out there for how widespread the data is that we're collecting. Next section we'll be talking about what we can do to make graphs that represent these things so we can actually visually get an idea of um, what's going on. Now another reason the interquartile range is important is because it can help you look for outliers. That was not a good writing. Outliers. Outliers are pieces of data that are, are so far outside of the normal range of the numbers you're dealing with that they probably aren't very accurate representations of all the rest of the data. Um, for instance, if I was talking about the average salary of an American, um, we have a few people that would be called outliers. There are a few people that are so far above what normal people would make in a year for their salary that that they are outliers. So, you know, your billionaires, your multimillionaires, um, all those people are way outside the range, and so they're definitely outliers. Which brings us back to the whole reason you would want to choose a median versus a mean. Notice how different the median and the mean are for this data set. You can kind of tell that most of the data is up in this 30s range, and there's only a small amount of data that's in the the lower amount, and there's actually a pretty great range between those numbers, relatively speaking. Um, so it's important that we think about, okay, is the mean, is the uh, average the best, or is median really the best determining factor as to what is the middle? All right, so all that said, outliers. The way you determine if there are outliers in your data is you take 1.5 times your interquartile range. And um, so first we're going to do that. So if I take 1.5 times 13, okay, so that's going to be 13 plus half of 13 is 6 and a half, so that's going to be 19.5. Okay, so what do I do with that? Well, what I do is I take my median, which is 32. Uh, take that back. My median was 31. And <clears throat> I add 19.5 to get an upper outlier boundary. Um, so that's going to be 50.5. And then I subtract 19.5 which is almost 20. So 31 minus 20 would be uh, 11. So um, 31 minus 19.5 would be just a little bit more than 11. 11.5. Okay, so when I look back at my data, I want to make sure that I don't have any numbers that are either higher than 50.5 or lower than 11.5. I look back at my data, I don't have any that are that high or that low. So this, uh, there are no outliers in this data range. If there were, then uh, we would call 
the um, yeah, basically we just have upper outliers and lower outliers um, to look for. Um, so that's kind of all of that stuff. I, I hope that was a helpful video for you. Um, feel free to check in on uh, some of the other videos to make sure you get the other information.